Hello and welcome. Today we're working on the idea that compound interest is magic. And this can be life-changing if you understand this. If you understand how investments work and how interest rates work and compound growth, this is life-changing for you and you need to understand it, especially when you're young. Hello, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn. We'll help you finally learn financial literacy like investing. So a couple little points we're going to make before we show you the charts and the graphs as we get going. Invest early, get started as soon as you can, like today. Invest often, like every month. Make sure you're investing something every month. The cost of waiting is expensive. We'll show this as a chart in just a minute. And so people say, well, where can you get these returns? Well, the S&P 500 is the, the list of the 500 largest U.S. companies and for many decades, they've averaged about a 10% annual return. Now, remember, it's up and down. Uh, as I'm recording this, the market is down uh, in the United States. The S&P 500 is down about 15 or 20%. So it's not every day and every year, but over a long period of time. Now, compound interest is the idea you're thinking long term. You're planting a tree to give you shade in the future. So that, that old quote is, somebody's enjoying shade today because somebody planted a tree 20 years ago. Now, the way you can do the uh, investing in the S&P 500 is low cost index funds. And so here are a couple of ticker symbols uh, that you can investigate. Now, this is a whole time value of money idea. It is, I have a playlist of how to do this on Excel. I'm gonna show you kind of the magic of compound interest, not the magic of Excel, if that makes sense. And I've got a playlist that's linked down below. All right, so let's get started. Let's say that you invest for 10 years. You invest $300 a month. And here I'm just, I'm showing you my assumptions and I'm calculating the future value. So let me go run through this real quickly. We're going to do periods per year of 12, so that's monthly. So 10 years times 12 is 120. Let's assume the annual interest rate is 10%. The present value is what you start with, and that's zero. And we're going to put in $300 a month. After 10 years, at 10% interest, you would have $61,453. All right, you think, well, okay, that's, that's nice, but that's not life-changing. But that's the first 10 years. Now, let me point to the... The red line is your cost of um, your investments that you make. So your total cost is 300 times 120 months, and so that is 36,000 in total cost. So here's how we think as humans, we think in a linear way. We think linear, straight line. But actually compound interest, here's why it's magic to us, is because it is a not a straight line. You see it starts to curve, and then it'll start to curve more and more. We're gonna show more years rather than just 10. So as you get started, it's very linear, and then the growth starts to take over. Now, so I've done this for all the months. I just have a table, I've done this all in Excel. So let's do, what if you have for 40 years? Well, 40 years, $300 a month, the same 300. 10% return. Now watch, 92% of our account now, our account is 1,897,000. Well, 92% of that is because of interest. We've only put in 144,000. If you take 300 times 480, you've put in 144,000. So there you go. But your account has 1 million, almost 900,000. So this is life changing, you understand this. Let your dollars do the work. Um, you think about your dollars as your workers. They're working for you. Let your money work for you. So over 40 years, you end up with 1 million, almost 900,000. Now, let's think about interest rates and think about payments. So let's say you can make payments of 350. Well, that's gonna be 2.2 million. If you can make a payment of 500, that's gonna be 3.1 million. So let's go back to our 300,000, I'm sorry, 300 uh, per month. And let's say that we have to pay, instead of doing a low cost index fund that we do ourselves, we pay somebody to invest for us, they get a 10% return, but we, they charge us 1%. So we're gonna get a 9% return. So that 1,897,000 ends up being 1.4 million. 
So what is that? That is uh, $490,000 difference. Let's look at that again. 1.4 million versus 1.9 million. So it's almost $500,000 difference. 1% makes a big difference. All right, so let's think about the cost of waiting. Let's go back and look at the person that, that invests for 40 years. I just took and copied this over, doing it quicker where I'm not showing you step by step. But here's what happens. If you invest $300 a month for 40 years, we know that's $1,897,000. What if you just say, look, I don't have time to invest right now, um, and you wait, you don't think about it, life happens, and let's say you wait just four years to invest. So you have a total of 36 years to invest rather than 40. Let's see how much difference that makes. That's only 10% of the years, four years out of 40, but you end up with 1262000 you're giving up $635,000 or about 33% of your portfolio. The cost of waiting is very expensive. Now, what if you waited 10 years? What if you waited after 10, you have 30 years to invest? You're giving up $1.2 million. Just waiting even five years, 35 years here, waiting five years to invest, is like giving up $750,000 of your ending portfolio. Now, if you're 25 right now, 40 years from now, you'll be 65. And I hope when you get to be 65, you have an account that's 1.9 million. If you don't start and you don't invest, that is easy math, you have zero. But if you do start and put in $300 a month, then you could have 1.9 million. If you wait five years and wait till you're 30 rather than 25, then you have 1.1 million. You're losing $758,000. The cost of waiting is extremely expensive. So let's think about the other side of this. What about the benefits from starting early? Well, what if you can start two years earlier? Instead of 40 years, you can do 42 years. Well, two years doesn't seem to make that much difference. 40 to 42, that's about the same, right? But in fact, it makes $400,000 difference, 426,000, about 22% more. So starting early is awesome, and you get to start now, even with a small amount. If you did um, a small amount, it's, it's still very important to start early. All right, so let's look at a, an example about starting early and investing. Let's look at, um, Olivia and Oliver, let's say they're twins, and uh, at 25, Olivia decides to invest, and she invests $3,600 each year, so that's $300 a month, $3,600 for 10 years, and then stops at age 35, and then we're going to calculate this all the way to age 65 and age 75. Oliver doesn't have time, so for 10 years, he does not invest. And then at age 35, he sees that Olivia is way ahead of him. So he says, I'm going to catch up. So he starts investing 3,600. He does this for 30 years and never stops or for 40 years. So let's see how, what happens when they're at age 35. Olivia starts to invest at age 25 to 35. So she's putting in a payment of $3,600. So she ends up having $57,375. Okay, so then that $57,000 becomes the present value, and she's putting in zero more dollars, right? No more dollars. So on her initial investment of $36,000, over 10 years, it grows to $57,000, and then for the next, let's make it 30 years, it grows another to $1 million. Okay, so that is the first 10 years and the next 30 years. And we'll do 40 here in just a minute. Now, Oliver, the math is going to be easy. Oliver invests zero. And so therefore, at age 35, he has zero. He knows he needs to do more than Olivia did because he's behind. So he's going to put in $3,600. Let me make sure we know this, $3,600. 
every year. Now, this is for 30 years. So is he going to catch up? How fast will he catch up? How much more will he have than Olivia? Well, in fact, he still has less. Because think about this. At 10% return, at age 35, Olivia is making 57,000 times 10%. She's making 5,700. And he's only putting in, Oliver's only putting in 3,600. And so therefore, they, Oliver waiting was a $400,000 decision. So what if you say, well, um, we're age 65. Let's keep on going for the next 10 years. Let's do it at age 75 and let's compare how much we have. And so if, if you switch it over to 40 years, Olivia has grown her account to almost 2.6 million and Oliver has grown his account to 1.6 million. So the $400,000 difference now is a $1 million difference. So getting started early, even if you take time off and don't invest, getting started early is so very important. Completely mind-blowing, life-changing, this looks like magic, right? All right, here's the idea. The first 100,000 is the hardest to get in your portfolio but then every other 100,000 is easier and easier and easier. So here's one of the reasons you gotta start now. It's like a big snowball. You've seen those cartoons, snowball grows, 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 and finally it knocks over people and buildings and things like that. Well, the first $100,000 is the hardest. So here's the math on it. If I invest 3,600, how long does it take to get to 100,000? It takes about 14 years. So here's our first 100,000. But then what is it to get to the 200,000? You already have 100,000 working and you're adding 3,600. Well, the next 100 takes about six years and the next one about three and a half. The next one about two and a half. What happens is to get to the first, let's say 500,000, it takes us about 28 years out of the 39 total. To get to 1.5 million, it'd be 39 years. To get to the first 500,000, it's 28 years. To get from 500,000 to a million, it takes 11 years. So once you get the ball rolling, your interest on top of interest on top of interest, that is compound interest and it is magic. And this is life change if you understand this. And I hope you understand this. I hope you're young and you have time to start investing now. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.